Adrenaline courses through the bodies of two super-powered web-slingers as they battle for their lives in the middle of New York City. Norman Osborn, better known as the Green Goblin, has taken advantage of the city's vulnerability and is making his move to take over New York once and for all. With an army of goblin henchmen and a legion of killer robots at his command, the goblin finally looks poised to squash his arch-nemesis once and for all. Sporting his trademark futuristic blue and red tights, the Spider-Man of 2099, Miguel O'Hara, dips and dodges between metal fists as they crash down towards him, threatening to flatten him with every swing. Of course, this strange black and red clad Spidey isn't the Peter Parker we all know and love, no. For moments before his death, Otto Octavius managed to trade bodies with Peter, making himself the city's one and only Spider-Man. The screen inside the robotic spider slayer crackles to life. Look into the camera, sweetie. Show your friend Spider-Man how terrified you are. The voice of the goblin echoes out while the horror-struck face of Anna Maria stares at Otto from the screen. Anna Maria! Otto screams as he looked at his kidnapped girlfriend. The goblin's face once more fills the screen as Norman cackles at Otto's pained voice. I'll kill you! The superior Spider-Man bellows, smashing his fist into the spider slayer with all his might, crippling the machine. He's tipping his hand. Miguel calls to Otto as the drones close in. He knows together we can beat these robots. Then I'll help you find the girl. Sound good? No answer returns to Spider-Man 2099's ears. Spider-Man? He whimpers, looking out the window and watching as Otto Octavius leaves him alone against overwhelming odds. You bithead! Miguel roars after him. I knew you were a poser. The real Spider-Man would never- But Otto didn't hear his final words, for the Spider Slayer surrounded Miguel and quickly overpowered the lone web slinger. Inside Otto's mind, another battle was playing out. This one, however, was being fought by the real Peter Parker, struggling to break free of Otto's imposed control. Again and again, Peter's consciousness is forced to live in Octavius's life. Pretty soon, Peter starts to lose his grip on reality, feeling his sanity slip further and further away. As Otto swung desperately through the city towards Anna Maria, his eyes couldn't help but take in the picture of carnage and chaos that stared back. Armies of spider slayers originally designed to help Otto patrol the city were now tearing down buildings at the Green Goblin's command. The police department, all of New York's vigilantes, even the Avengers and and the X-Men had their hands full trying to keep Osborne's forces contained. And it's all my fault, Otto thinks to himself. Like so many times before, the brilliant Otto Octavius, the self-christened superior Spider-Man, has failed. Meanwhile, at City Hall, Mayor J. Jonah Jameson was struggling to keep the city calm. It, I, I didn't build the darn things. Alchemax did. They're to blame. Jameson tells the press, throwing the blame squarely off his own shoulders and onto the company formerly known as Oscorp. Liz Allen, the CEO of Alchemax, interrupts Jameson with her own news briefing. I warned the mayor the robots weren't ready, but he proceeded on his own. She revealed, offering proof that Jonah himself had signed off on the use of the Spider Slayers prematurely. What the cameras didn't see was the Emerald Goblin mask Liz held behind her back. Otto was swinging through the city at breakneck speeds, moving as fast as he could to reach Anna Maria in time. Suddenly, his spider sense began blaring, and a familiar chilling laughter rang out among the high rises. Menace! Otto yelled as Norman's number two goblin flew out and took a swipe at him. Away, woman! I have no time to waste on lesser goblin, says the fool who's barely half a Spider-Man. Menace howled back at him. But that works out nicely, doesn't it? Because we have a girl who's barely half a hostage. This got Otto's attention, and he tore after Menace as the goblin ducked into the subway tunnels. Where is she? Octavius roared as he blindly followed Menace into the dreaded sewers. As Otto's mind raced with fear and anxiety, Peter's self was still experiencing Otto's life on repeat, trapped in a loop. But finally, Peter saw the light. As he reached the moment in Octavius's life where he had traded bodies with Peter and was forced to relive all of Peter's memories, the smoldering ember that was Peter's consciousness suddenly roared into a blazing flame. I'm Peter Parker, and that's my life! Peter exclaimed as his own memories suddenly filled his mind once more. No longer merely a ghost in the machine, Peter's consciousness sprang back to its full vitality, remembering who he was once more. I'm taking it back. All of it! Peter screamed inside Otto's head as the original Amazing Spider-Man was born once more. Oblivious to the breakthrough occurring in his own brain, Otto continued to wildly chase Menace through the subway tunnels. I swear to you, if that woman's been hurt, you'll suffer in ways you've never dreamed possible! Otto threatened as Menace just laughed. 
Is this your stop? She asked sarcastically. A train roared down the track towards them, and tied to the rails, Otto saw a small, helpless form. But when they approached, the superior Spider-Man realized it was not Anna Maria tied to the rails, but Amy Chen, a child that Otto had saved only weeks earlier. Octavius froze. I, if, if I miss, if I'm hit, there'll be no one to save Anna Maria. What should I? But just then, the voice of Peter Parker erupted out inside of Otto's mind. Jump! Peter commanded, and Otto dove in front of the train, grabbing the child and hurling them to safety. Shh, you're safe now. Otto comforted the child after the train had roared by. No sign of menace either. Peter's ghost said, once more free to talk to Otto outright. The anger in Peter's eyes was apparent when he glared at Octavius. You screwed up, Otto. When there's time, you weigh options. When there's not, you act. And you always do the right thing. Otto's head dropped as he was humbled by the man whose life he stole. You know I'm here now, and I know what that means. Well, bring it. I'm ready this time. Otto glanced up at Peter. Yes. You are, he said softly. Otto passed off Amy Chen to the police after exiting the subway and wasted no time in dashing off into the night. Oh my god, how could you let things get so bad? Peter asked in astonishment as he stared out across the burning city. I didn't really comprehend what I was in for. I was arrogant, the superior Spider-Man admitted. But you, you're guilt-ridden because deep down you know you are smarter than others. Today you will own up to it. Today you must accept that you our superior. As Otto spoke, he and Peter raced across the rooftops towards Parker Industries, the company Octavius had started in Peter's name. Follow me, Otto called out as he led Peter towards his private lab. When they arrived in the lab, Otto got straight to work. Robot, ready the chair. I will be entering the Mindscape. As the computer's word and his robot assistant placed the machine atop his head, Otto stared straight ahead, determined. Just so you know, Otto, if this is some kind of trap, I'm ready for anything. Peter warned his old enemy. I believe you, Otto replied flatly. That's why I'm doing this. As he entered the mindscape, Otto's entire life flashed before his eyes. Your childhood? Peter asked as the two men paced through Octavius's memories. Yes, it's vanishing. Doc Ock told him, you must have no distractions, no confusion. I'm expunging all my memories, one after the other. Slowly, it became clear to Peter what Doctor was doing, erasing himself from Peter's mind and giving back the body he stole and killing himself in the process. My Anna Maria, Otto said as his more recent memories began to play before their eyes. You, you really love her, Peter said. Yes, Otto promised him. And to save her, I must give up every part of that love. Slowly, Otto Octavius, the superior Spider-Man, began to fade away to nothingness. For I know, only you can save her. He told Peter as his consciousness began to be unmade. Octavius looked Peter in the eyes one final time. Because you are the superior Spider-Man. A moment later, Peter was finally alone with his thoughts in his own mind for the first time in months. Peter was thrown back into reality in full control of his own body. A tear rolled down his cheek, Otto's last tear. Peter slowly stood full of determination and sorrow. He took off Otto's Spider-Man suit and donned his own classic tights once more. My turn, Spider-Man said with Peter Parker once more in the driver's seat. Atop a skyscraper in downtown Manhattan, a blindfold is roughly tugged from the eyes of one Anna Maria Marconi. Eyes wide open, Miss Marconi. The chilling voice of the Green Goblin sounds out. I'm dying to know what you think of the view. When Anna Maria opened her eyes, she was staring out at the burning, chaos-filled city. New York has fallen, Osborne announced. Behold, my goblin nation. Back at Parker Industries, Peter was still adjusting to being back in his body. The employees and partners Otto had worked with during his months as Spider-Man were new to Peter, and he struggled to gain their favor now that he was back. Finally, he noticed a familiar face in the laboratory. Carly? Peter exclaimed, seeing his old friend sitting alone, her eyes covered in sickening green scales. Miss Cooper was infected with goblin formula. Sajani, so Otto's work partner, told Spidey. You have a way to neutralize goblin serum? Spidey said incredulous. Can you make more? Fast? Sajani so was surprised by this less violent version of Spider-Man and agreed to start working as quickly as she could on the new doses of the vaccine. Carly, it's me, Peter. I'm back and I can prove it, Peter said as he pulled Carly into a side room for some privacy. When Ox swapped minds with me, when I was in his body, I told you, you didn't believe me and you took a shot at me. Carly stared into Peter's eyes. P Peter? She said. It is you. 
Oh, thank God. A quick embrace later and Peter was back to business. He began asking Carly what he had missed while he was gone. You, Otto, cover the city with spider bots and mini bots looking for crime. But the goblin hacked them, made them blind to anyone with a goblin mask or logo. Carly launched into the entire story, catching Peter up to speed. Peter launched through the city, desperate to find Norman Osborne as quickly as possible. But as he searched, he knew there were others that needed his attention as well. Peter called up Aunt May and Mary Jane, making sure they were both safe and secure as he whipped across the city, taking down spider slayers as fast as possible. I'm ruined! Mayor J. Jonah Jameson bellowed as he trashed his desk in anger. And I have no one to blame. But myself. He sat, head in his hand, staring at the news stations as they detailed the minute-by-minute -minute destruction of New York. Meanwhile, the board of directors at Alchemax were getting the best advertising their robotic drones could have dreamed of. See for yourselves, my friends, live footage of Alchemax Slayer bots fighting the Avengers to a standstill. Tyler Stone announced, bidding starts at 12 million per unit. As New York burns, supervillains all over the planet were making sure they were next in line. Back at Empire State University, a tired, beaten, and heavily bruised Miguel O'Hara had finally battled his way through the mountain of spider slayers he'd been left to fight alone. Think that all of them. He panted as one operational drone leveled its gun at his skull. Spidey barreled into the drone at the last moment, saving Miguel's life from certain demise. Not quite! Peter yelled as he smashed the robot into smithereens. Miguel O'Hara? What are you doing in this time? Peter started to say, but was cut off when Miguel reached up and grabbed him by the throat. You left me to fight all those shocking robots so you could change costumes? Spider-Man 2099 roared at him. Peter started trying to explain. I was brain swapped with Doc Ock, so I don't know what's been happening. But I'm off to fight the Green Goblin, and I could use some help. Miguel just glared at his predecessor for a moment. Yeah, that sounds just stupid enough to be right. Let's go. He said, annoyed. Down in Midtown, Peter tore through hordes of goblins as the Avengers struggled to keep the peace. With the Hobgoblin leading the army in the streets, Peter made sure to take down the lieutenant fast and hard. Hobgoblin, right? Peter joked as his heel collided with the goblin's skull with a crack. New outfit, same glass jaw. The Avengers noticed the drastic change in Peter's demeanor, which Peter had no time to explain. Hold the fort! We spider guys are off to shut this down at the source. He promised Captain America as Peter and Miguel left the Avengers once more to confront Osborne once and for all. The two wall crawlers made their way to the Alchemax building where their trackers had traced the Green Goblin's location. Alchemax? Peter wondered as they approached. What happened to Oscorp? Miguel caught him up to speed. It merged with Alan Chemical months ago. This is the beginning of the megacorp that runs Nueva York in my time, he explained to Peter. The two sped towards Alchemax, expecting to find the Green Goblin waiting for them. Instead, they were ambushed by Menace almost immediately. Menace dove after Spider-Man 2099, taking him crashing through a nearby window and sprawled out across the ground. Menace expected Spidey to leave Miguel to die, like he did with the Spider Slayers before, and began choking Miguel out on the ground. But Peter wasn't the type to leave a friend behind. He dropped onto Menace's back with a well-placed punch, knocking her out cold. While the goblin was incapacitated, Peter administered the goblin cure, which slowly began changing Menace's form back to her human body. The cure works, Peter exclaimed, though his cheery demeanor was chilled when he and Miguel heard the laughter echoing out from the main office. Normie Osborne, Norman's grandson, sat at the desk, smiling softly at the chaos his grandfather had created. Moments later, Tyler Stone and Liz Allen rushed into the room. Liz grabbed her son and ushered him away from the spiders. But Tyler activated a machine that sent Peter's spider sense into ballistics. Miguel put a stop to Tyler's gimmicks with one brutal punch across the jaw. With Tyler out cold and Liz and Normie far too close to danger, Spider-Man 2099 agreed to carry the three civilians to safety. You took a serious beating partner, Peter told Miguel. Can you get Stone and Menace out? Miguel looked back at him. Sure but you're pretty beat up too. Peter didn't waste a moment in scaling up the building as Miguel swung off to safety. I'm good. My head's clear now. Trust me, it's clearer than it's been in ages. I'm going after the goblin and the girl, Peter promised. That's what I do. Atop the building, Peter finally found who he was looking for. The Green Goblin, aboard his trusty glider, hovered around the rooftop with pumpkin bombs spread across the floor, and Anna Maria tied up and helpless amidst the explosives. And here he is at last, the hero of our little drama, Osborne announced triumphantly as Spidey came into view. Really, Otto, you're just embarrassing yourself with this charade. The goblin continued, assuming that it 
it was still Octavius inside Peter's body. Saving that little lady is your last remaining achievement as Spider-Man. When it all goes boom, you'll have nothing left. <laughs> Spidey stared back up at Osborne. Accept the dignity of knowing I never carried a man purse, he quipped. Norman froze. Upon hearing Peter's voice, the goblin recognized exactly who he was up against. Fear turned to hatred as Osborne's pupils narrowed. It's you, he said. Peter glared back at him. The one and only. The Green Goblin hadn't planned to face the original Spidey that night. This, this wasn't in the program, he stuttered as he started to rev up his glider. Another time gotta fly. But Peter wouldn't let Norman get off that easily. Spidey leapt into the air after the glider with just a minute left before the pumpkin bombs covering the roof ripped the building down. No, it's a trick. It has to be. The goblin raged as he desperately launched a bladed dart at Spidey. Peter caught the weapon mid-air and hurled it back down at the rooftop as he sailed closer and closer to Osborne. Yeah, you're Osborne, all right. Always underestimating everyone, Peter said. Back on the roof, Anna Maria watched as Spidey whipped a dart into the wall beside her. She instantly understood what she had to do to survive. She used the blade to cut her bonds and began working her way out of the ropes that held her. You, you think I'm afraid of you? Osborne desperately yelled as Spidey finally reached his glider and began grappling the goblin. I've beaten you before. I've crushed you. Peter was unfazed. Yeah, you were great against rookie Spider-Man, he told the goblin, but I've crushed you too, he said as he tightened his grip and broke both of Norman's wrists with ease. The goblin followed up with a headbutt, but not even that could loosen Peter's grasp. This time, I'm putting an end to you for good, Peter yelled as the two nemeses whirled across the New York skyline on an out-of-control glider. You don't have the stomach for that kind of justice, boy, the goblin seethed. Osborne did manage to knock the cure out of Spidey's hand, but at that point, Spider-Man had all but taken the goblin down already. Peter pulled the goblin's mask off, only to be met with an unfamiliar face staring back. I have absolutely no idea who you are. Spidey said as he stared down at the stranger. That's the point, imbecile. The goblin screamed back. I am Norman Osborn, but my face was well too known, so I changed it. As Peter and Norman grappled each other over thousands of feet in the air, Anna Maria had finally almost freed herself from her ties. Norman was monologuing erratically about the legacy he was building at creating Alchemax, but Peter was hardly listening. His spider bots had finally made their way up Norman's body and were overtaking the goblin even as Peter's strength became too much for Osborne to handle. Spider-Man! Anna Maria screamed from the roof. She had mere seconds left before the entire building went up in flames. Anna dove off the rooftop, praying that Spidey was fast enough to catch her. The Alchemax rooftop exploded with the force of 10 bombs as Anna threw herself off off the roof. With Osborne finally at the mercy of Peter's spider bot, Spidey peeled off from his fight just in time to see Anna hurl herself into the air. Peter caught Anna with ease, making sure to ease her slowly into his arms so as not to accidentally hurt her. Moments later, Peter's spider bots had shut down the goblin's glider and Norman was hurtling towards the street as well. Hold tight, Anna Maria, Peter said as he reached out to save Osborne from the fall as well. We have a very full flight today. Osborne couldn't believe his eyes as he found himself being slowly carried down to the street. I don't understand. Why? Peter answered his question before he'd even asked it. Because I'm Spider-Man, he said, and when I'm around, no one dies. Even you. Once Peter had safely set both Anna Maria and Osborne on the ground, the goblin assault on New York had all but fizzled out. Unfortunately, C. Norman sent Liz Allen into an anxious attack, which caused her to activate the spider sense jammer. The machine disrupted Peter's focus just long enough for Norman to escape his grasp and duck back into the sewers. Though Peter believed it had been an accident, he also decided to keep a close eye on his old friend Liz. Norman had escaped, if only just. As he rode an abandoned subway car in the depths of New York's underground, he surmised to return one day, if only to put an end to Spider-Man once and for all. Poor fools, he thought to himself. Next time, you'll never see me coming. Peter and Miguel made up with one another, vowing to once more always have each other's backs. And in the aftermath of the attack, Peter was even able to patch up his relationship with the Avengers, who Otto had thoroughly alienated during his tenure as the wall crawler. Of course, it was Anna Maria to ask Spidey to make sure that Peter Parker, her boyfriend, was all right. Whoa. He really means that much to you, huh? Spidey asked her. Everything, Anna said through her tears. He's just the kindest, most thoughtful person, and his mind, if you only knew him the way I do, he's just so amazing. Peter stared after Anna Maria as the paramedics took her away. 
One thought played over and over in his mind. She loved him, he realized. I was wrong. For me to be here, someone had to die. 